405, recognizing that we have a quorum, I'll call the meeting of the um, August 21st, 2018, Fair Airport Authority meeting to um, authority um, to, to um, I'll call it to order, in order. Sorry, so first order of business is the approval of the minutes of the July 17th meeting that Pam did for us, and they were, they were exceptional. Does it have a motion to approve the minutes as presented? I move. And second. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you, Pam, for doing this. And then the other thing is that two days after the meeting on the new law, you can watch these sessions and on streaming live, and it, it was really good. It does a good job to refresh your memory if you ever have questions about what actually were said. So I did that the other day in preparation for reviewing the minutes. Uh, the next number two is updated the Al. Dot F A. Okay, all those in favor of approving the minutes as presented, signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed? Okay, the, the minutes passed. Number two is the update of the ALDOT FAA grant for the East Side Construction Project. Um, where we are is the, the contract's been, contract has been, is going through the process with, um, I guess, I, I guess Volcker is doing their thing and, and we will actually sign the contract within a couple of weeks. I mean, it's, uh, uh, they will, they've actually told Cunningham Delaney that they're going to get the contract. Um, I would think within two weeks or so that we would have a signed contract and move forward with mobilization. Uh, really, they don't want to start to the middle of September because of the, some funding issues, but um, I think that within two to, two to three weeks we'll be in mobilization and, and being started. But they've been notified, and we've done everything we need to do as far as moving the contract forward. Do you remember the time frame on that contract? What the six start? months. Six months. But I was told Vince that we, if we, if we started timely and we got the priority that we should have get should get from them, it could be through by December. I mean, it's really just a pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. You know, once you start laying asphalt, it, it should go pretty. pretty Except easy. for that drain down the middle of that ramp. Except that's, the drain that's, and, that's, and the and the um, weather is going to affect that. And and the um, well, and we we'll have to work a little bit with. Closing the runways for for you know but uh, for yeah for the runways for a couple of days while we do the reconnection tax. I did get some good news on that. Um, Eric Katina said could, said uh, tentatively that we could work at night to do those. I mean we usually I think there's a, a, a permit you know you have to get special permission, but since there's no housing authority around us or anything like that, that we can get permission to actually do a work. Six to six, that'd be yeah, great. that would be good. That way the runway would not have to be closed as long. So that's a good piece of information. Okay, number three. Josh, you want to talk about that? <laughs> update on the Aaliyah lease. Uh, we have it. We have it. We have it. So that's the update. We finally tracked it down. Uh, it worked its way through the, the state bureaucracy, and we've got all the required signatures and stamps and approvals. And have we received the money yet? The check, this, is, the check is in the mail. They okay. said they would, back, would pay us for June, July, and August. Mm -hmm. Fifteen hundred dollars a piece, which was that was a problem too. Yeah. But we supposedly the checks are in the mail, and we, we should be uh, up to date. And, and there'll be invoice going forward. So invoice, we don't have any problems. In, invoice the going forward in September. In fact, we've been invoicing there every month. So I might have mentioned this earlier. <clears throat> I had a lease with the state yep. building mobile. They asked me to send them twelve months worth of, of invoices at one time, and then it's starting in October after their year ends over with. And they love it. You don't have to send them, and they actually pay on time. I, th I think we. I think that's something you that we. That I think that's something we can do. I, I guess we do that. We we'll get paid on time starting in October. We get paid on time anyway. Just a year late. <laughs> 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 Once we get on a cycle, right month wrong year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, item number four. You got, uh, Chip, you want to talk about that? Um, Russ Kilgore called to me. He's involved with the Aviation Council of Alabama and asked why the Fairhope Airport Authority did not belong, so I guess that's an item of consideration if we want to join it. Were we ever members before? We've never not? actually been a member. Okay. I have occasionally attended their conferences mm -hmm. in Mongo when they're not in Montgomery or Birmingham or, or Orange Beach. I've never gone anywhere else, but, um, you know, and I, I guess I'll put my spin on it is, is it's a good organization. It kind of lost its focus a little bit. Couple of years ago, it had some some issues. I believe something like that is if unless one of our officers really want to get involved, I'm not sure it's money money well spent. But um, if somebody wants to get, you know become part of it, when I went to the meetings, I always felt like I was you know just 
there. Going just there. Uh, but anyway, I'll, I'll leave it up to the, the group if they want to. It's five, I think it's five hundred dollars a month a year. We certainly could. Okay. And they are having their annual conference in Mobile, September 17, 18, and 19. And I've not given him everyone's email address, but if y'all want it, he'd like to send everyone an invitation. And, and I would encourage you. I mean, the, the, I mean, I, I would, I would think the authority could pay. It's a hundred seventy-five dollar registration fee. I would think if everybody has a, would like to carve out a couple of days and go to that, I, I think that would be time well spent. It's a good cross section, and they do have good speakers. On Wednesday, they actually have an Airbus tour. And you have to have you have to have a passport, and you just got you have to go through security and whatever. But I mean that's worth the you know that's worth going. So if you know, Chip, do you want to make a motion that we join, or what? What, what do you what do you want to do? Well, anyone want to discuss it, or y'all? What are the pros and cons? Yeah, what's the benefit? I don't I don't know. Russ contacted me about. I don't know that much about the organization. You've been to some of their conferences. I never have had anything. I think before. you know they, they had some issues. There were some. Um, they had some problems with the larger airports. You know, there was a kind of a, uh, a split between the Mobile, Birmingham, and the larger airports and the general aviation airports. They had some, um, <laughs> they had some. Um, That's his wife, because that used to be my ringtone for my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one of those. <laughs> they, had, they had a problem with their old executive administ uh, administrator. Mm -hmm. I think there were some issues there. Um, you know, I I, I, I I found the I found the program is very good, and f I think it was. And, and quite frankly, what I'd go for is our FAA guys go and we could lobby them for money. That's kind of how we got to where we are. I mean, they, you know, we go and we can make spend a few minutes visiting with Kevin, and and Rance and just say this is what we're doing. And they, they you know, that was that was worth the price of admission. Um, what do they do different than the Aviation Alliance Committee? Well, the I don't I don't know what they do, but you know the alliance was kind of a spinoff, or it it was started after they kind of lost focus a couple of years ago, and it was that was what, and I didn't know anything about any of this at the time until I got involved with the alliance, but that was that was as a result of them losing their focus is when it got started. Was the focus because, more on the commercial airports mm -hmm, as opposed was, to the general aviation? Yeah, that was basically it. So perhaps we're. We, Derive a greater benefit being involved with the GAA. Yeah, yeah. Well, the GAA doesn't have a membership or due structure yet, which we would eventually like to get there. But at this point, we don't. So, but what did Ru what was Russ's platform when he called you? I mean, he just called and asked if I knew any reason why we didn't belong and if we'd be interested in going. Want to know if I could, you know give him y'all's email address to extend an invitation y'all to attend their conference. Unless we want to go to the conference or whoever can go and then make a decision next. Well, month. that might be an idea. I mean, again, I think everybody. Like I think everybody should should. I mean, we certainly could pay for people to go. Okay. I mean, so, I mean, I think that'd be a, a way we could test it and see if you enjoyed going. See if there's well, we'll try that and see who can yeah. go and see what benefit it brings us. Okay. Okay. What are the dues? Do you know? They're five hundred dollars a year. Now this conference is two twenty five a person. Now that and, and we're not and we're just you know we're not going to spend the night in the battle house. So uh, yeah. So, I mean, if it, it could get pricey if we all went to, you know, Huntsville. Well, it's nearby. Let's look at it and then see whoever goes kind of report back what they think. Well, I'm going to go. And I, okay. I mean, I would encourage everybody else if you could. The dates are that they have a reception that Sunday night, uh, work sessions Monday and Tuesday, and the Airbus tour on Wednesday. So, I would encourage everybody if you can carve, carve some time out of your schedule to go. Okay, and then we will revisit that in the in the September meeting about. Right, sounds good. Okay. Will you want to talk a little bit about the, the academy? Uh, yeah, I didn't bring my notes with me, so I don't have the numbers. But uh, the academy seems to be doing real well. Joe and I met with the uh, headmaster out there a couple of weeks ago, and. Uh, it looked encouraging. Uh, she's got an instructor out there that has uh, really done a lot of recruiting of students, and they've got uh, a lot of new students. Fifty-five students in the aviation track this year, which is you know, almost double what they've had in the past. I was glad to hear that along with the curriculum in the school in Mobile and here in Fairhope, between the two, uh, a student can graduate and sit for the A&P exam 
which I think is significant. I've got a line guy that works for me. It's in high school down at Saltaire. He's been going to the academy for two years, and this summer he went to A&P school mm -hmm. over there, and when he graduates, he's going to spend two more years, and he'll have his full A&P and, and IA and be done and ready to hit the workforce at 20 years old, you know, uh, with a fifty dollars $60,000 rate of pay after he spends about three years in. I've heard, I think somebody that came down for the conference we had out there about six months ago said that Delta is starting out new A and P's at 80 a year really? in Atlanta. Mm. Yeah. That's strong. Well, the, the goal is for us to be able to have a full A and P curriculum in Fairhope or in, you know, in, the, in Baldwin County. And that's something Mandy said she would, she would work towards as the numbers got higher. I was impressed with what you told us. Yeah, I mean, she's, yeah. And the guy that spoke at our at um, the conference, he's the, you know, he's basically the curriculum manager for mm -hmm. uh, the AMP. Yeah, he's. He, I thought he was very articulate. Yeah, did a good job. Yeah. Didn't he say he was in Theodore? I didn't know there was a school. I, I know there's one at Brooklyn, but I didn't know there was one out in Theodore. I, I think there's. I, it, it, I think there's one at BC Rains. I there's think B one at BC Rains, almost a clone to what we have. Yeah, it's almost the exact same. I mean, place. I think they did it right after we did our. I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, they actually bid theirs before us. But, but he said something about Theodore the other day, which I didn't know there was an aviation college of any kind at Theodore. Might he might be in the high school out there? I don't know. I don't know either. But I was I was encouraged, and this was this was a. I was encouraged by both by the mm -hmm. his, his speech and by the by the number of students we had. Okay. Me too. Okay. Um, okay. Number um, number six, um, and I say approval. Let's call this. I think the really we want to look for approval is maybe, you know, the this meeting. This is just to get this on the table and kind of to start a discussion. Uh, I got lots of emails when I sent this out uh, today about. Um, sending out a notice of availability of the east side hangar ground lease. I think I included a rough draft of that uh, notice of availability in your package, and that's what it is, is a rough draft. But there are a lot of things that need to be thought about as to what we're going to advertise and what we're going to actually sell on the east side. Uh, and, and, and anybody wants to articulate those issues, go ahead and start. I mean, the biggest one is, you know, we're gonna, are we going to have one fuel farm? I mean, are we going to allow everybody to have a fuel farm? Or how we how are we going to manage the fuel farm situation? Uh, there's just lots of issues. Josh, you want to elaborate? Just, well, just on the fuel farm uh, question, this is a resolution the authority adopted back in 2014, based on an inquiry from the uh, FAA regional office, and the resolution is that the Fair Airport Authority hereby resolves to repeal its March 18, 2014 resolution that no corporate hangar private fuel farms be allowed at the Sunny Callahan Airport at this time, and number two, to establish a new policy that corporate hangar private fuel farms be allowed at the Sunny Callahan Airport consistent with the Federal Aviation Administration Airport Compliance Manual dated September 30, 2009. Uh, without getting into the, the details of the manual, basically self-service fueling should be allowed and needs to be allowed but the authority has the ability to place reasonable restrictions on how it's done so for example a fuel farm cluster was mentioned and i think that that would be a reasonable manner to not restrict but to impose certain regulations on how the fuel farm is managed as opposed to having a fuel farm at each individual hangar pad mm -hmm. but you know how the board decides to move forward with that on the east side it's up to y'all but with the, with the knowledge that we can't eliminate the self-service that is required by the FAA regulations. So there has to be some manner of self-service, but sort of the methodology that the board uh, decides to use to employ that is there, there's some flexibility within that. Okay. Well, and I'll elaborate a little bit more. The, the issues I see it is whether a private, whether the fuel farms clustered or by their hangar, whether someone can own their own fuel farm, a, a, pro, a, corp, a, corp, a corporation. Uh, we, we went down that road again in 2013, 2014, and I think that's the outcome. Uh, so you know, that's something we need to be aware of. And we, we you know, we, I mean, 
you know, I, I wish we could, could find a way that we could cleverly limit the number of new, um, number of new few forms there, of a few forms there. Mm -hmm. And I'm open for suggestions. Here's what, just, and here's what the, just a quick blurb from the manual. The FAA considers the right to self-service as prohibiting the establishment of any unreasonable restriction on the owners or operators of aircraft regarding the servicing of their aircraft. So that's their catchphrase, or if you will, unreasonable restriction. So we've got several issues. We, we want an FBO over there. So if everyone can self-serve their own fuel out of their own fuel farm, we don't have an FBO because there's no need for one. Yeah. Right. Uh, so we defeat that. So if we designate a certain area like we have right now that I'm going to propose later on that we move it somewhere else over there because <laughs> it's right where you come in. It's, it's about as unsightly as it can get. But if that area is whatever size, and it holds four fuel farms, right. one for an FBO, and then the first three to say I want, and then that's it. Are mm -hmm. we obligated to designate more land and do it again, or it was because everyone's not going to want this, and there might be one or two, and then it's going to take care of itself. Mm -hmm. um, well, all I can say for sure is that you can't restrict somebody from servicing their own aircraft or from fueling their own aircraft. So that that's what we know now as to how the authority decides to go about it on the east side you know, like you said whether you have a cluster of four here and you know the fbo has one and then the first three have the other one but then you face the possibility of somebody saying well okay that cluster is full i mean i don't have the opportunity for self-service there so what do i do i'm going to build a fuel farm on my own hangar pad when i lease that from the authority i, I don't think you can say in that circumstance, I don't think you can refuse them the right to do that. Or do you say, well, we've got a cluster here, we're going to add another cluster somewhere else, and you're going to have one of those. But but we're not going to have a fuel farm on each hangar pad. We're going to designate certain locations where we have these, these clusters of fuel farms for the self-service component. Because if you're the FBO and Will wants his own and he puts it at his hangar, mm -hmm. And Chip wants one in his hangar, and I want one in my hangar. So now I don't have to go lease a truck to service these because I have it built right there on my hangar. Right. But you, as the FBO, have to lease a truck because you can't pull every plane up to the fuel farm at that location. You got to go fill them on the ramp. Mm -hmm. So now we're doing a disservice to an FBO. Yes. Uh, which will discourage people to come in as an FBO. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a fine line somewhere that we can legally say, here's what we have, and this is all we're going to designate for areas, and this is all that will fit on it, and first come, first serve, and then we're done. Sure. And and I don't, I don't know how we do that, but other airports do. Yeah. I was going to ask you, how do they do it? You can't get another one at Jack Edwards right now. They refuse. To if you got a designated field. area, and that's it. I think and that's, the, I think that's the approach is we have a designated area, and this is it. Mm -hmm. Because there are too many airports that have denied. I mean, Pensacola Company I used to work for wanted to, they built a huge hangar and they wanted their own fuel and they said no. And, and we're spending eighty thousand so, dollars more on asphalt, a, a, a type of asphalt that basically is um, spill resistant on at that at that cluster. So I need to know where you think it needs to go so I can move that somewhere <laughs> away from the front entrance to our FBO. <laughs> well, okay, <laughs> which is what I suggested a year ago. It needs yeah. to be out there by. Well, we can we can move it and we insert it. So anyway, all right, so. All right, well, long story short is this is an issue, you know, in the, in the actual um, notice of availability, I would like to go forward with publishing it in the 1st of October. So we've got really 45 days to work this out. Can I ask a few more questions? You can ask, it? yes, I'm sir, please. Related to fuel farm. Sure. And, uh, uh, hey, before you move, Vince, I do think, and I know we've talked about <coughs> the, the minimum standards, and mm -hmm. I think that's also going to be real important mm -hmm. yes. in this, so that whatever the vestige is that the authorities left with right. at the end of the tenancy mm -hmm. is something that's serviceable and uniform. Right. So that's I think something. we need to the, 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 dig in and say that. And what is the minimum size tank that you want where you're not having a 2,000 gallon tank? Right. I mean, yeah. you say 12,000 gallon tanks, you're going to limit. How many of those are going in out mm -hmm. there? So, um, so, we've got a. I called Eric Cortinas again to ask him to be sure my memory was correct. It was close. 
we need to, and, and this probably says, according to City of Fairhope approval in here, but you know, we agreed mm -hmm. that we would leave 30 feet from the building mm -hmm. to the property line, right. unless that tenant built a two hour wall inside. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then if they don't build a two hour wall, as far as the city's concerned, they go all the way to the lease line. If they build a two hour wall, they can take it all the way to the lease line. We would be well served to say, you know, follow the city code outside 30 feet. You don't have to build a two hour separation wall. Anything less than that will only allow you to go to 10 or 15. I'd, I'd say 15, and that way you'll have 15 each way in case of emergency. We have access between. Yeah. Well, we need we need yeah. some kind of a, a blanket reference to City of Fairhope building codes and ordinances. It, it, in I, in the newest version, it's got one. Okay. So I mean, but that's the, a, yeah. But the the City of Fairhope, if you put a two-hour wall in, lets you build. It's a zero lot line. Right. So. I think as an authority, we need to come back and say above and beyond the city, we, we put this 10 or 15 foot in there so we have this safety factor. Uh, okay. I see, yeah. I see what you're saying. Somebody in the series said the city of Fairhope wanted to know if we had zero lot lines. I don't remember asking her. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it said. <laughs> Big brother is alive. <laughs> <laughs> that that was one of my questions, but we, we need to get that incorporated so everybody yeah, understands yeah, it. Understand. Because yeah, if you yeah, want I, a ten thousand foot hanger or a six thousand foot hanger, and we have movable lease lines right now, it could really affect what someone does or doesn't want. And then a lot yeah. of our minimum standards, I could throw out a hundred yeah. things, but we want the buildings insulated, walls and ceilings. They're going to become ours one day. We, we want well, that wouldn't that come under the architectural review? I mean, I mean, we'll it will, but the folks are going to need to know up front. Yeah. That it's kind of like what I think we just said doing? about twelve thousand gallon fuel tank. If they know up front, my minimum's eight thousand or twelve thousand or whatever. Some folks are going to say great, and some are going to say no, thank you. Going back to the firewall, was that part of the city's fire code that brought that into play? Where I remember talking with Eric about it, but what was the source of the? Yeah, when did that come up and what was the source that he was relying on when we were going through that? This originated with uh, Ray's hangar and Alan's hangar. Right. And then he went through the code of what he would allow us to do in this special, but he said anything in the future right. will be to this minimum. Right. Which was a moving target for them at the time that they've established. Okay. So the 30 feet without the firewall, zero lot line with a firewall. And that's where I say we probably need to pick up something in between there and I got one more comment about this right, please uh, I've been heavily involved at Brooklyn on some stuff and at Mobile Regional and at uh, Jack Edwards most of those now they have full-time paid employees a different that we don't have a difference we don't have they don't put out uh, bid solicitations they just announce we have this land available Here's our minimum size to whatever size you want to put, you know, maximum size. And here's what it is per square foot, subject to all these regulations that we were discussing. And we make it known to the public and don't take bids. And somebody comes up and says, hey, you got that one designated over there, 300 by 300. I want 300 by 200 at that price. <clears throat> so, okay. Well, I, I, first of all, I, I took it away from a bidding situation. It's now just, application. A, just an application because right. I think it's – and then secondly, the, 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 the actual sites are are almost 1.1 acres. They're bigger than I thought they were. They're big. So so we're, we're going to have to, I mean, what I tried to do is say we would have, the, they would, if somebody wanted to build something on smaller, you know, so if I thought we would go back and approve it individually. Mm -hmm. you know. and, and I'm just saying I don't think we need to even do that. We need to advertise here it is. Yes. And if you want it, yeah. say, hey, here's where I want and here's where I'd like it. And I already know what it costs per square foot, and I know what my requirements and setbacks are, and and I'm ready to go. And then we just say yes or no, and we have a good reason to say no, or we obviously say yes. Without it, here's the deadline, and you need to do okay. it on this well, date because it, it really just needs to be made public on our web page through these meetings that it's available. Here it is. We're we're completing our grant work because right now this needs to say subject to getting this. Three point three million dollars we hadn't got yet. You yeah, know. but yeah, but we don't have it now. We'll be under construct. I mean, uh, yeah, right. That, yeah. That's just my thoughts. There's, I think, also when you're talking about your construction and architectural review languages, I noted in my notes, 
there's something in here that says the person may subdivide. It's not explicit. How many times can they subdivide? That's very vague language. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you need to allow somebody to subdivide. Yeah, I don't either. You, you, don't, you don't want to rent any more land than you need for your hangar. No. And so I'm not. You know, if a couple of people are going in and building a hangar, they probably just share it as one open space instead of having right. a so I'm not non load bearing like wall be or something there. down the middle of it to subdivide it. Mm -hmm. and, and I, I guess it's only wanted one thing and they wanted two things. So, okay, we'll put your you firewall in the middle and build your one hangar there. And, but if you, if, you, if you only, the, if the goal is to build hangars and you got a one acre, one acre piece of parcel of land, you could you, I mean, could you in good conscience build two hangars easily there? With even with the thirty foot setbacks, I mean, I mean, well, is it a waste of land? I yeah, mean, you put the firewall in there. Yeah, you, yeah, you could, you but it doesn't to. really need to be the tenant that's doing the subdivision and subsequent approval of the second hangar. You know, yeah. I mean, that would be something that I would think the subdivided land would need to be. If that was your intention, then you would ask for a smaller piece. We're, we're going to subdivide it. Yeah, we're going to ask for those two guys to give us on their separate hangars a liability policy. All right, so now we got one guy who's subdividing, yeah, who's getting a liability policy, and this one to pass to here. It's going to get convoluted at a point. We really need to deal with one individual, us be protected from a liability standpoint, and then know that we're dealing with this individual and be protected. Because what we don't want to be is the guy in the middle when they say, well, his plane caught my hangar on fire, mm -hmm. and, and I gave him the liability, and he gave it to you, but I'm not honoring it because I gave it to him, and he started. You know, <laughs> we, we wind up in the middle. I think I got that. I've been sued before. Pam? <laughs> <laughs> I was the, the John Doe right to be named now, later. You're only talking about four hangar paths. But if you just put it out that we have this land available and this is the total amount of land, someone may want a smaller one. We might get more than four hangar paths there, which of course increases our revenue stream. Mm -hmm. And I think we've been approached before at one meeting, I'm trying to think of the gentleman's name, and he's putting together a group of like three individuals who would like to go in together and build one large hangar and share it. So, I think so we'll they might want we'll a little bigger that. space. But, but I do think, back to Vince's, I think we ought to put out something and in, in kind of draw a line, line in the sand and say, we've got, we're have got, we ready to do this, and here it is. You Here's know, and this is, you know, this is, you know, I don't think maybe the deadlines could be moved back six, six weeks or six months or whatever but we i think we ought to tell the world both by advertising and by sending out individual emails that we've got land available and we want to start you know building vertical structures on these sides. well it's an indefinite deadline until we run out of land yeah you know but yeah. we also need to pick a minimum size because you don't want right. uh you don't want, yeah. you don't want me to say hey i'm gonna build me a hangar here 40 by 40 and, mm -hmm. and put my plane in there and but I'm gonna take up all this land this way. I'm gonna lease it, but we really don't want 50, 40 by 40 buildings 30 no, we years from now. We won't. Yeah. Yeah. We want 100 by 100, 10, 100 by 100. And that's big as we can get. That's where the architectural and the construction comes in. Is to you know the, the the look that we want for the airport and the design standard we want for it and what's required. And a minimum size. And a minimum size and a maximum. All right, what's y'all's pleasure? Do you want to? put together a working group to kind of work flesh this out in the next four, four weeks? And I think so. I think so. Okay, what I'll do is I'll put my latest comments on it and resend it to everybody. Joshua act, act, act as the is the final person and just put your comments on, you know, put you know, put in a Word document, just put any comments you have to it. We'll, we'll add it and the next time we, we meet, we'll, we'll knock it out. Okay. Okay. And then, you know, I did, there were several, I mean, while we're talking about this, there were several comments from Continental Motors, too, about it, too. It wasn't like it was, I mean, I mean Red had a, a, a real, I mean, Red had a real, an opinion about how he, how he thought it should go, too. And he's an FBO. Yeah, he's and, the and, FBO. He, he's, he's exactly what I was talking yeah. about. We're going to discourage another one. Yeah. But as yeah. we're, you know, this working group and defining the stuff, so we've got to, complete the section of the minimum standards that will deal with architectural and construction standards. And new hangers. And new hangers, right. That's okay. really the piece that's missing right now. And Josh, I don't know if this is legal, but we might come up with a standard 
for a few farms that you have to have a minimum size hanger to justify having your own fuel farm, Not a bad which thought. is That's equivalent. Good That's good. That to, is good. To that what is good. He built equivalent to what Allen built, yeah. equivalent to what Fairhope's already built, mm -hmm. and that would eliminate yeah. a lot of those problems also, mm -hmm. and I believe. Be and as a practical matter, matter, I've only heard of one person that wants to open a fuel farm. And I've had three people who want to build a hangar. So, but ask Chip how many they have in Birmingham because there's only uh, one when the first guy built it. Everyone's got one. You don't want to run off the runway there. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got one. But that might be a way to sure, narrow, right. narrow down yeah. that need. And really, if it you doesn't say no restrictions. It, it just says no you have to build a hangar this size. You haven't got a ten or twelve thousand foot hangar. You really don't need a fuel farm anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or three airplanes. Can we do that? I don't think you want to do, be the police on how many are in, in there subsequently down the road. I think like as long as it's tied to square footage, like it just the square footage doesn't change. That makes sense. That does. Okay. And then you get into sprinkling your building and, and the other things, which you know become two hundred fifty and three hundred thousand dollars. It, it okay. I really don't want that. I just want what I need. Mm -hmm. you know. All right. I like that. So the. The takeaway is work towards in the next month to get some, everybody get draft comments to um, Josh and we'll knock it around and we'll put it all together and we'll, we'll bring it back in, in September. And the construction and architectural and section done on the minimum standards. Yeah, and I've worked on the, re, I mean, part of this is we actually showed that we have a, um, a conceptual lease and the lease is in pretty good shape. So I mean, you, the, uh, the, somebody's going to ask, can I see a lease? and. We've got a lease that's in pretty Has good Jess shape. Has just recently reviewed that lease, that conceptual lease? No. I, well, I say recently. I haven't reviewed it since we were going through uh, the lease process with uh, with Ray's company. Well, the thing I sent you a couple weeks ago. It's not been it, that long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. It's in pretty good shape. It's in pretty good shape. It'd be nice, though, to just review it, maybe. Oh, definitely. Oh, and again, with, with the lease, you know, there's is plenty within the lease that is subject to negotiation you know a lot of things are set in stone and that's what we need to make sure we've got you know those pieces need to be set insurance etc but then there's still a lot within the lease to be negotiated so you know, the architectural side is going to be real simple you can't put a batman logo on your door like the guy did at jack edwards here's your color I, I think that's you, already in there the batman, the batman and, logos. And but, but one thing we haven't talked about is how thick your slab is. A guy might want a 10,000 foot hanger with a bunch mm -hmm. of 172s in there. That's going to be a problem for us 30 years from now. So mm -hmm. we, we, that's where we need to get some architect input. Okay. Well, we do have an architect in our advisory board. So. All right. All right, moving, moving on. Uh, number seven is formation of a working group to build a general aviation terminal on the east side. Any comments? <clears throat> Oh, and I think that's a, I think that's a mission that's been stated for a long, long time before most of us were here. So it's good to see that there's going to be movement in that direction. So I don't know what that ends up looking like and who yeah. operates it, but I think the building needs to be something that's the doorstep to Fairhope and whoever operates it. If it's Continental, if it's someone different, I don't know, but it needs to be a facility that. We all can be, be proud. proud of it. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Vince, will you take ownership of getting a getting a contractor and a design? Yes. Okay. And I'll take ownership of raising the money, or at least coming up with a plan to raise the money. Um, and we'll report back not not in September, but in October, where we are. Does that make sense? We need a million dollars. Uh, Eight hundred thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we can okay. Do like American Pickers. How about we take nine hundred? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking we could do it for seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, but I, you know. But Are there we'll any see. parameters around what I mean? What you want to see, or do you just want the working group to come up with that? I mean, do you have any <coughs> ideas? Well, there's, and I'll send everybody. The, the uh, Goodman Mills and Kaywood has done with working with John Egerton has done. A, 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 they have a series of uh, templates. You know, of, of schematics, if you will, of a 4,000 and a 3,500 square foot facility with the rooms and whatever. And I think they have architectural plans too. Now, um, you know that we have that. I mean, it's and I think we, I think, I think they, the aeronautics department owns it. Now, what I would think we would do is use those as a starting point, 
and get an architect engineer to, to basically to, to make it look like we want it to look you know we don't like we don't want it to look like Troy's but I mean I think that would be a good starting point so I, I was using the number 4,000 square feet that's so not that was a nice facility do we have to bid out architect fees on that or can we no we're, we're exempt from the bid laws you need a, you can't do it but no, Vince, do you want a budget to have to, to go forward with getting bids and, and getting your architect on, on board? Well, we're going to have to get a. We, did, we need to just talk to them, get a concept of what we want, and then ask them for what an all in fee mechanical, electrical, plumbing, landscaping, everything for their fees, which is usually 8 to 11%. I think we can get an in kind service for the landscaping. Mm hmm. So let, let's don't do that yet. Let's talk okay. to a few. So that's why I was asking if we have to bid. If we can just talk to a few and find out where they are, the you know architectural fees and all in included everything is anywhere from eight to eleven percent. You agree with that? Mm, I do. Will Doctor Eagleton share those drafts? Yeah, to oh, we, yeah. we we have them. I mean, oh okay. Okay, so I think uh, we can get some ideas and get that ball rolling real easy. Okay. And and then if I can get a number, I can I can then kind of come up with a plan to raise the money we need to, to do it. But I need I need a number. Okay. All right. So we'll the, the report there is that by the October meeting, we'll 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 move have have moved that forward and it, and, and decide how we're going to go and get a kind of how, what the price is, if you will. Okay. All right, Chip. You want to talk a little bit about the um, the general aviation lines? Uh, General Aviation Alliance of the State of Alabama had a regional managers forum last Thursday at the school building on airport property. I thought it was a pretty good turnout. We had it divided up in the morning, more of a presentation. Um, I think the focal point was a girl named a Amy Bradham, who's head of economic development up in Prattville, and I think she gives a pretty impressive presentation on their saw a community of what 40,000 people, probably billion dollars worth of revenue that airport brings in every year it's pretty impressive and, uh, but I thought ships presentation was equally as good I mean I, th I thought you're I mean I thought you had as had as good of you know direct impact as she did I mean international paper has been there for a long time yeah. and we gave we had just yeah. divided it up and yeah. we the state this uh, um, Frank Farmer from the DOT gave a presentation and then Amy gave hers and then I gave one with Joe's help on where we are with our airport and our project here. And uh, although it's well received, we had a pretty even mix of uh, economic development. Um, the mayor from Fairhope, the mayor from Daphne was there, uh, local government officials, and uh, Wells Airport Management people. And then the afternoon was more just an airport manager's forum for the people that are involved in direct operation of the airport. But I think it was. They, they had one up for the north part of the state in Scottsboro last month or month before last. I think we're going to have one in October in Tuskegee to cover the middle part of the state, and we've covered the southern part. So, small group kind of starting out, but they've done three legislative briefings that have been very successful. One up in Huntsville, and then two in Montgomery. So it's getting some traction, but it's there just to support the general aviation airports in the state. And, help them, the managers of those groups also help them with funding issues that they might not be aware of, and things like that. You know, we've got a lot of ideas on where we'd like for it to go, big ideas, so we hope we get there, but I think we're off to a good start. Thank you. All right, um, the next number nine, I'll, I'll, I'll bring that up. Um, I'll kind of talk, put that out there. Over the last three or four months, really since our um, our visit with Continental Motors Group, when we actually had a chance at moving that here. In fact, they had a brown, groundbreaking today, by the way. But um, we were, have been approached by the Mobile Airport Authority to partner, and I'm not sure what partner really means, and I'm not really sure what you know what 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 you know what we would get out of this, other than I could see some you know as far as some IT services and some grant administration services, some things like that. I'm really kind of thinking that they see projects, especially Airbus and first and second tier, second and third tier suppliers before we do, 
and there'll be things that don't fit in Mobile that we might be able to have a chance to be part of if we that we wouldn't otherwise. Um, I think Chris Curry's a pretty Vince met him. I think Chris Curry's a pretty upfront guy. For um, sure. And I, you know, I. Is he the new airport guy? Yeah, yeah. The new director. So I'd like some thoughts. I mean, I'd like some some guidance of how y'all want to go on this and what. The, I mean, I don't have. I think we draft some type of memorandum of understanding, maybe contract for some services, web development. Um, have they suggested I, what scope they were looking for? Well, I, they asked me what I was looking for, and I said grant administration, IT support, um, some of the things that you know, operating procedures for airports, kind of those kind of things that we don't have right now that we don't have a formalized way to, that we do on an ad hoc basis. Um, but in the back of my mind, and really not in the back of my mind, we, we, we've always said that, that they're going to run a lot of people off of Mobile before it's over with, and we would be a good place for them to, for those people to come. Is that, then we said that so much in, that, in our meeting, didn't we, Vince? Yes. Is that they're not going to, they're not going to be everybody's airport. They, there are going to be some people that aren't fit, and we would have a chance to... I suspect it's probably something, you know, if you think kind of the two steps ahead with the expanded Airbus and the suppliers and kind of the push that the authority over there is making to relocate the regional terminal down there, that there's going to be a dislocation of a lot of what's down there now. So, I mean, I would suspect that exactly what you're saying is all of a sudden it really does make uh, us a much more viable target for some of those things when you take up the space that's left behind with all the hotels that are going to take up what is now industrial property if that ever were to happen down there so I don't think it's going to hurt to talk to them but I think you don't know what you don't know and you're going to have to find out what they might offer you so I think it could be a great a conversation right now. And, and let's find out yeah. whether whether we're interested or not yeah okay um, always listen yeah well what I what, what we'll do then is um, Maybe have put up a group together and have Chris come come visit. He lives here. Um, you know that's a good thing. Really? <laughs> so I mean we can we can have lunch with him sometime. And he can tell you kind of his idea. He's got a he's got a better command of this than, than I. And he would present it better than I would. But it was um, I think that might be something we do. And then we would go yep. forward with a letter saying we're interested in talking. And then if flush I out understand him right. Like and I forget where he was in Florida, but he did this with two or three airports there. He did this. Let me see if I can. He, he came from Tallahassee, so he would, that was a airport probably the size of the Mobiles. But he was down on the on the on the um, at Harbor Island, at Marco Island. He had three airports. Marco Island, I guess, is pretty similar to Fairhope. He had you know he had one one. It was kind of probably more like Gulf Shores, but he ran that airport. That's where he kind of got his airport training. So he's very comfortable in a. Um, in a leisure community, if you will. But he did never really say what he wanted to do. So we need to find out what that is. Yeah. 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 Let's just find out first. Well, I'm not sure he's going to say, well, I want to do these things. I mean, I'm not ever, I'll, I'll remember to go and say, well, we're going to do, you know, I think what we would have to, I mean, I think what we would do is we'd have a laundry list of things that we would work on together and we would have an opportunity to see things as they, as, as they happen. I don't think he, can look out and say what he's doing. But he is actually firing people, firing people is not the right word, but he's actually encouraging people to move out of Mobile, Brooklyn, Brooklyn as we speak. I think we need to hear him out. Yeah. Would it be appropriate to invite him to the next meeting? Yes. I mean, he, oh, he, he, came, he, to he came to our uh, aviation. I don't think he'd want to talk. I think, yeah. He came to our aviation. Uh, he came to the yeah. meeting. Lots of meeting. Yeah, it does. Lots of meeting. Well, if he could, you could arrange for him to communicate to the members if he doesn't want to do it. However, we need to do it. I just think we need to he have a better appreciation for what he is, you know, what okay. his intention is. All right. So we'll, I'll, I'll see if I can get 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 some maybe set up a lunch or something like that, or um, maybe move that forward. Okay. All right, Chip. Nomination of officers. Um, Ray has expressed an interest in stepping down as treasurer, so here's so granted, and 
we had a discussion last time with Josh about whether we needed a treasurer that was on the airport authority or not, which is not a requirement. And so uh, Josh, Josh drafted a resolution for us where we can have someone as treasurer that is not on the airport board. And Amy Pearson with Airbus, who I've never met before, but now we know his, uh, she's on our advisory committee and she has graciously uh, stepped up and said she would be willing to be our new treasurer. Well qualified. So, and very well qualified. And very well qualified. And very well and engaged. You're welcome. So glad to have you. Thank you for stepping up. It'll be a substantial upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. You didn't have to. <laughs> so right now what we have is, is enabling legislation says the treasurer does not need to be a member of the board but our bylaws have kind of merged the secretary and treasurer into one position. So what we need to do is have an amendment to the bylaws that separates those positions into two distinct uh, officer roles. And uh, once that is approved, then of course we can have a non-board member serve as treasurer. Um, another quirk in the bylaws is that for any amendment to the bylaws we have to introduce the amendment at one meeting and then approve it at the next meeting it's just the way they read so you know I don't see any problem with that being that um, this is the August meeting we can introduce the proposed amendment if anybody has any questions about it I, I emailed it to everybody I think it's pretty straightforward we're just separating the roles of secretary and treasurer uh, but it can be introduced at this meeting we can approve it at the next meeting prior to the formal nomination of the slate of officers for uh, fiscal year 19. Okay. So there's nothing to do this meeting? Other, other than to say we have introduced, moved to introduce the moved to introduce. resolution. I do have a question. Yes. Um, on the second page under D, the duties of the treasurer, Correct. we left blank. Um, shall it be Yes, and, that, that's a, and I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, I would say if the treasurer is going to have authority to disperse funds, and I don't know that that's, that's been the case historically, but if the treasurer is going to have the authority to disperse funds, I think as a non-board member we should look at having that person bonded. I just think it's a, a good practice. Uh, and so I, I left the amount blank because I didn't know what the board might be inclined to do. But um, just a recommendation, but, but I think it's a good practice. It would be important to have a bond for anybody who has the ability to disperse the funds of the authority. Amy, have you had an opportunity to read this short paragraph on the duties of the treasurer? Okay. Well, I would like for Amy to be able to write checks, or not write, we don't write checks, mm -hmm. actually the, the, the person who manages the operating account. Okay. Uh, I, I see the going forward as we get into grant season, I see her doing the operating accounts, you know, the, basically paying the bills, and, and myself working with Volker to actually disperse the money for the, for the grants. That's a pretty full-time deal in itself. So um, I'd like to get her on the accounts, and we'll, I'll, look, I'll look into getting, getting some uh, insurance. Some, mm -hmm. uh, and if, if the board has just a general sense of the amount of the bond, it, it, it doesn't affect the ability to introduce it. We're just going to insert whatever number the board I'll, feels would be an appropriate amount. I'll talk with the risk manager and figure that out, which is what makes sense. So, is there anything, anything else where we want to make a motion to accept this for a vote at the next meeting? Yeah, just a motion to introduce it for subject to approval at the following board meeting. All right. All right. <laughs> right. I want to make a motion that we accept this uh, amendment to the bylaws to be voted, in, voted on by resolution at the next meeting. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor of the resolution, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank y'all. For, for Amy's benefit, what about, we got directors and officers insurance? We got yes, we did. Yes. yes, we did. Any yes. need for that for her? We'd have to get is, with uh, Robbie. Let me, get, let me see what the best way to do that. We have lots out. of DNO insurance. But as a non-member of the board, I don't know. We need something. to ask that question. For her benefit. Officer. Uh, yeah, I, officer. And I don't think officer. it would be a problem if there are any questions. We just need to show you. Know, here's what the state law provides. Here's where we changed our bylaws to provide for this. And I don't think it should be a problem at all. We just need to make sure she's covered, right? Like we are, right? Okay. 
me ten bucks. You told me you give me one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. then to follow that up, next month we're going to recommend Joe stay as chairman. Pam is co-chairman. Chip lost the coin toss as secretary, <laughs> and then Amy is our treasurer. And so after we get that formally approved, that's the presentation we'll make for that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Vince. All right. Um, number eleven, the flight line manager's report. Joseph. And I have uh, Abe Harper's here, and he can talk about the cameras and okay. security. He can, he's met with David Shear and can give an update on that. Okay. Yeah, Abe, why don't you? Or Abe, why don't you start first? And you do the, that's the first one in the cameras in fits on security. Absolutely. So uh, David and I have had a chance to talk a little bit over the last couple of weeks. Um, where we are basically is we're breaking the quota and breaking the, the project up into very specific scopes. One set of infrastructure, one set for assets. Uh, we think that's going to be the best allocation and the best recovery. Right now, it's just, it, we keep getting prices that are unrealistic. We keep getting through the roof stuff, um, well in excess of industry standards it seems. so. We want to try and get it as lean as we can possibly sure. get it and as aggressive as we can get it, but at the same time, that means having to fracture it up. We're, um, the latest is that we've researched providing the uh, man lift equipment as well as the actual infrastructure tooling, the wires, the termination points, and then just having someone source the labor components only and then allowing another company to come with the cameras because Whoever provides the cameras is also going to be responsible for sustainability and maintenance on the back end. And the only thing I would suggest there is that when you buy the when you rent the lifts, have them put the cameras in at the same time that you don't have to rent, rent the lifts twice. Correct, correct. That was kind of the thought process. We could okay. rent it and have it have it done kind of they hang the wire and both teams are effectively available with so the same. So where are we price wise on this project right now? I forget the last one, but for what it's worth, we had one wiring company come back at over two hundred and fifty dollars per wire. Which is a bit extreme, um, considering the numbers. I think it was sixteen well, we cameras. Eighteen thousand. We were. It was six. We we had one that was sixteen without infrastructure. And that was sixteen for the cameras alone. That was no yeah. wiring. That was no. We could have it in a box. Yeah, that was yeah. everything being delivered, dropped off, and <laughs> so you, you, know, <laughs> you you can you have cameras in a box. Yeah. Well, this is have a life of its own. I mean, I, I I thought the authority agreed to, you know, to cap our responsibility at fifteen thousand dollars. Okay. So, um, so we could. That's a good some number for me to have. I, I wasn't. I didn't know that we had a top yeah. end limit that we wanted to target, but that's. But I mean, the Continental was. I mean, they they certainly. You know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, they can certainly get some benefits from those cameras too. So. Right. Right. Okay. So anyway, I guess you know we. Uh, I guess the good news is that. Uh, we had an inspection from Homeland you know, from the Transportation Security, Safety Security Administration the other day. And it was kind of an ad hoc thing, and um, you know he was impressed that we we're buying cameras. <laughs> I don't think it's a requirement for them, is it? It's well, no, not for an airport, not for a GA airport. Right. But he he was impressed, and he had some ideas about them, and and David talked through the ideas that we had. So I think I think we I think we did cover that base. So while the total amount of cameras we buy will exceed 15,000 only for the the small amount of cameras the airport authority is interested in. The, or the infrastructure, the, the, you know, it's a total project. And the other moving piece to it is that we've we've built it with expansion in mind. Yeah. Um, we, the, the one of the pros we had limited us to 16 cameras, which was a big problem because at 16 cameras now you've got to stack multiple units, um, something expandable that will be able to have multiple places on the on the facility and then visible from multiple locations without extra license incurred. And that's that is a standard option. We just have to find the right person to do it locally. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ava. Thank, thank you, for, Thank you for participating. Joe? On the um on the bridge we do have a uh, base customer that's gonna build the bridge. Okay. So we can see her tonight. And we approved so. he he said the S of did, are you still in for the bridge, Tom? Yeah, sure am. I'm actually meeting with the other carpenter tomorrow to try to see if we can reduce the cost a bit more. So the cost I saw was twenty two hundred dollars. Is that twenty four hundred dollars? Is that do we want to spend twenty four hundred dollars for a bridge over the over the over or less? The, yeah, or less. Oh, over the uh, or less over the uh, culvert. 
I don't know that I'm familiar with where we're talking about. Yeah. It's going to be between the safety hangar, public the safety hangers, and one and the team. big old concrete culvert. Oh, culvert there's no the walkway place. over it. I think just from a liability standpoint, we need to move forward with it. Someone fall and slip and yeah, break a hip or something. Handicap accessible on this. He's going to build it wide yeah, enough. Handicap accessible. Rails and 36 inches wide, maybe you know whatever it takes for a wheelchair. Tow boards and rails. Very good. So and you'll mark. You yes, marked where you. Yeah, I have the okay. spot. All right. So um, we're I'll make the motion we spend that money. Okay. I think we've already approved to do it. I didn't think we, we didn't have a number before that. So let's let's formally it since that is a big number. Let's formally say that we'll spend up to twenty five hundred twenty five hundred dollars twenty four hundred twenty four hundred dollars to build a, a bridge over the culvert that's uh, handicap accessible. Do I have a motion to do that? I'll make that motion. I'll say. Okay. All those in favor of spending the twenty four hundred dollars signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Um, Repair of weather stripping on the door. On yes, the sir. All of the all of the sides of the hangers have been completed. Okay. Um, I'm getting two quotes on the door sweeps. One is a, a harder material versus the bristle type that we have now existing, and that seems to want to break up, deteriorate over time. I'm working with a company out of Pensacola, Rubber Specialties. They make a it, it's, it's like a hard rubber. So it, it might last a lot, a lot longer. So I'm looking at, I'm getting quotes on both of those. So you've replaced all of the hanger strippings on, on yes, all sir, the hangers? Yes, the weather stripping on the sides. On right. all you, the hangers? You have skirts on the sides of the hangers, yes, sir. Thank you. That's those quiet. are done. So I'm just waiting on the two quotes uh, for two different types of materials for the bottoms of the doors, the door okay. sweeps. Uh, ceiling and paving, taxiway and aprons. Uh, that's really kind of one of those things that's a, Going to be a 2019 AIP project. I mean, we're you know we applied for additional a, monies for that. Right, federal funding. But I do want to comment that the um, we're getting the runways and taxiways uh, basically swept about every quarter now. Yes, sir. Every every quarter with a really good sweeper too. So it's really making a difference. But can you tell the difference? Oh yeah. So that's a that's a positive. Um, City of Fairfax sweeping the runways. That's good. Uh, Update of security mil the, the, the military fuel contract. I spoke with, with uh, Mike Miller from Ascent Aviation, and he is working on it. The contract is up for bid next year. So he's 2020 get, or 2019? Uh, and he's supposed to get back with me, um, the young lady that works in his department for Ascent Aviation that deals with military contracts. She is w working with um, Pensacola. Wright Patterson Air Force Base, evidently the Air Force, so you have to go through Wright Patterson for to go through bid process. But as soon as I find out from him, I'll, I will uh, get back with you on that. But that is a priority that we, we can secure a contract. And then the, um, I just put this on this a new that you know, we want to be fully engaged in the ALP flying in Gulf Shores. We think right. we can get some spillover planes. Um, and hospitality, is there anything we can do to help you with that? Um, since this is the first time we've done it, it's, it, it, of course, it depends on the weather, too. So the weather plays a big part in it. Um, we're lining up a tour of the plant in Mobile on Friday. We can do a tour of the, um, you know, the manufacturing process over Mobile. Uh, okay. So I'm working on that right now, and as well as over in Fairhope with our overall facility, providing tours through that. But we have to get, we have to get names. They have to go through a background check. Are we, do we have a pretty good relationship with the city of Gulf Shores? Are they, have they been? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Marissa Montgomery is who I, my contact down there. So she's been really, really good. How do they feel about us potentially getting some of their planes in? Well, they're all for it. I mean, it's, it's um, they're going to have customers or guests that are not willing to fly into a heavily congested area. So they're, they're going to go to outlying air, airports like Foley, Fairhope, just because of the congestion, their experience level. Um, because it will have a towered, it'll, it will be towered during that event, so they're going to have controllers. We thought about tie down spaces at our airport. Um, we can use the old taxiway. We have further down, you have the grassy areas. We can we can um, tie down there, have air, aircraft tied down there. So now, as far as uh, wanting to overnight, a lot of people maybe want to camp out. So we'll just have to, you know, see what because we'd have to have um, portalettes brought in for that. Mm -hmm. uh, portable showers, so that might be something we have to look at. 
We probably need to do some coordinated social media mm -hmm. and with the Downtown Merchants Association and the city so that everyone's aware potential for them to be here and in the city and spending money. Right. So I can work with you on that if you okay. like. And Casey's aware of it. I mean, she, she yes. embraced it, so that's right. right. So yeah. we need to work with the chamber on that as well. Joe, thank you. That's so, Joe, in the back of my car, I have a Fairhope flag for you. Thank you. So, order another American flag, and then we got the win and I paid for the windsock. All right. Going, and we did put a new windsock up, so that, that was done last week. So, if, you have, if I get hit by a truck, the Fairhope's got about 100 Fairhope flags. If you go ask Paige, Tuberville nicely, she'll give you one about once a year. <laughs> nicely and once a year. That's the two problems. I, I, I ask her about once a year. Okay? How big are they? They're big. They're big. They're flags. I don't think I've seen one. We've got one out the airport now. Where? I don't know. The Continental Motors. It's on the, north, it's on the front of the North Hangar, the American flag, and the city of Fairhope. That's okay. Okay. Joe, anything else? Want to add something? That's it. Okay. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Ray, you going to do the treasurer's report? <laughs> Last one. Yeah. Last one. <laughs> Drum roll. <laughs> going, going, going. It's not going to be the same. Um, okay. Um, I guess everyone got a copy of this. You know, we've got our revenue, total revenues year to date. Everyone saw that, 750,298.68 current month, 54,368, and we see the revenues stream kind of being consistent with what we're used to, no extraordinary items there. Um, kind of going to the expense uh, columns, if we look over to the uh, ledger sheet that was mailed out by Joe, we do have one worth uh, mentioning and also some income to that Joe sent out a little explanation on, but the Baldwin County Fence Company, if we recall there was a, an accident out there with someone on County Road 13 that ran through the fence and caused some damage. Um, the repair bill is um, on here, and then also Joe, will you mention kind of how the flow of cash moved? <laughs> well, I, uh, it was a, it's a, it's a, it's a story in itself, but I have worked out a, a repayment schedule with the, the mother of the it was $875, and so she's, she gives me $225 every two weeks, every three weeks at the Walmart. So she gave, made her first payment, made her first, made her first payment Saturday. <laughs> and I had cash, and I didn't know what to do with it, but you know, we're, she, she'll work it out. She's a good lady. But her teenage son just went joyriding in somebody else's truck on a Sunday afternoon. He wasn't drinking or anything. He just lost control. I flew with slippery day, so she's doing she's trying to do the right thing yeah. so anyway there's a little bit of color for the last treasurer <laughs> <laughs> does, her, does her son have a job now to pay his money yeah. the cash <laughs> transaction yeah. going on your last yeah. report yeah. the, the, the only thing that's kind of service. gotten away from me a little bit is is um kyle's cutting of grass yeah. and it looks really good out there but with the, but we're cutting the grass a lot we may next year want to, you know, we, I think we try budget for eight cuts. I think we're at nine now and probably holding. As much we, rain as we have. I know, but Kyle like just, he, he likes it on that track. <laughs> so we may, we may have, a, have a conversation next year, maybe limit it to nine cuts, because I think we'll be at 10 this year. But, you know, that's $4,000 a cut. A lot of cuts. That's a lot of cuts. It's, like, yeah. it's a big place, too. So. What is the total acreage out there? About 450 acres. Really? I should know this, but did we ever get reimbursed for the uh, distance remaining marker for the foliage yes, plant? Did. We got that. Good. We did. It takes a long time, though. It's not. It doesn't happen. <coughs> the big thing is that we've gotten a. The big thing was the ALEA. I was just like, when we got that email Thursday, I was just like, I didn't think we'd ever gonna get the money from from the, from the public safety funds. Would it make any sense to look at? buying a tractor and mower at that rate i mean just to, to have over time it seems like you know if you look at what that's 10 a year and forty thousand. yeah i mean it's not you know, i'm just wondering going forward it might be a 
Don't ask it. Still I see a smiles. Labor cost. Still labor I mean, yeah, it's kind of like you all lease or own. They supply the tractor. We so I just wonder for sweeping the uh, runway and other things that might, you know, that could well, be. Well, we got the cities stepped up on the sweeping. I, I mean, that's a hundred thousand, eighty thousand dollar machine, and it is really. I mean, the, the new one they've got is the real deal. I mean, it, it is. You know, um, I don't know about a tractor. I'd, I'd like to have a tractor that. I mean, it'd be nice to have a tractor out there. Yeah, Joe's looking for it. <laughs> After he goes and picks up money at Walmart, he can get a motor. <laughs> 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 so, how many more Walmart trips do you have? I think three more three times. Sounds about like three to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, Vince, Vince knows about getting you know blood out of a turnip. You can only do so much. Right. Well, that's the yeah the end of the treasurer's report. So, All right. Um, anything else? Yeah. Uh, Two things under other Thank business. Um, we have a another person we'd like to vote on for the advisory pool. He's here, Bill Pennington, right there. Um, he has an extensive background in construction and estimating and so forth. Vince met with him and uh, recommends that we add him to our advisory pool. I sent out his bio to all of you, so I would <coughs> like to put a motion forward to add um, Bill Pennington to our advisory pool of volunteers. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay, the other thing is um, we have with us um, Damien Field. Um, he has just emigrated here from Australia, accompanying his wife, uh, who was transferred by Airbus. He is a helicopter pilot. And for uh, several months until his paperwork is sorted out and he can fly over here, he's looking to uh, volunteer and get involved with the airport. And Joe Baggett went out the door before I had an opportunity to <laughs> introduce him to him. But um, if you'd all make a point to speak to him and can figure out uh, perhaps how he can volunteer with us during this time frame. So, welcome. Oh, uh, and Mr. We had a tractor. <laughs> and Mr. Who? Mr. Booth? Yeah. Booer? Yes. Booth? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm Bill Booer. Uh, we moved here about two years ago uh, from Washington, D.C., as I like to explain it, 76 square miles surrounded by reality. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I have been involved in a number of activities and engaged in the aviation field over 27 years in Washington. Uh, have several uh, friends who uh, play key roles in the FAA, uh, the President and CEO of Rolls Royce, uh, and have been involved in those types of things. As I listen here uh, to some of the contracting issues with the federal government, particularly the military contracts and things like that, uh, have worked with folks in, in uh, purchasing and PMD, various things of that nature, and. Uh, just happy to be here, and if I can help, uh, more than happy to, to help out in any way that I might be able to. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think you'd be a great addition to our advisory board. Well, I'd be honored. Okay, we'll we'll move that forward. I wasn't prepared, but we'll move it forward. Sure. Okay. Okay. Any other business? Any comments from the from the um, from the audience? Any advisory pool members that are here have any comments or? Any thoughts to put forward or anything? After the forum uh, the other day, did you get any feedback from either of the mayors as far as the presentation or what they saw? I did. I did hear from uh, Mr. Haywood, uh, hey. Daphne. And he stayed to the end. He stayed, he stayed to the manager's the, yeah. forum, and he was there 15, 20 minutes after. Very the engaged. He, he particularly yeah. liked um, the morning presentation, the economic development. Um, he took a lot of notes. He took a lot of notes yeah. and, and thought that there were probably several areas that the airport could work with Daphne on in I mean, terms I, of economic development. Yeah. And is, there, is there any, any follow-up or should there be any follow-up to the mayor's offices there as far as what they saw, like the Prattville, you know, economic development uh, strategies and visions? Well, well I'll, I'll speak to that. I mean, I mean, when we get a plan for this general aviation terminal, uh, you know, with a dollar number and a presentation, you know, that's what I was going to, I mean, that, that was going to build on that momentum and go see the mayors, both, both Mayor Wilson and Mayor Haygood, and 
the mayor of Spanish Ford and say this is a this is an Eastern Shore Airport we should all be proud of it and we would like you you know some some help funding this general aviation airport I'll ask our chairman to put it on to see if he will send them an email or contact somehow to yeah. follow up to see their thoughts on the presentation and everything good idea Thank you. I don't want to speak for Dane, but I got the impression from talking to him. He's all on board that this is an Eastern Shore Airport. So well, I think, yes. I, I think we've had a good opportunity to involve. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's. It's from I mean, Baldwin County. There, I mean, there's of those four jets that are out there, two jets, two of the owners of the jets live in Daphne. I mean, I mean your, your business is, is actually in Daphne, isn't it? It is. So, um, okay. Any other. Comments? Scott, you've been awfully quiet. Are we doing that good a job? Making notes, Scott? Taking notes. <laughs> All right. If there's no other business, come, uh, I'll adjourn the meeting at, at 5 15. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you.